Hi, my name's Lou, and today I'm going to be reading to you from the internet. Why? Well, why not? And today's what is not a forum. I know you were expecting a forum, but instead, today is a website that is a place where people drop their confessions. And sometimes the confessions are very mundane, and sometimes they're probably fake, but that's what this site is. People can anonymously just put their confessions online, and it's a website known as grouphug.us. So we're just going to jump right in. None of these posts have any names attached to them, so I will probably just read them as they come along. I'll just say the next one, so don't expect to hear any clever avatar names because... It just generates a random number when you add in your confession. And I'll just read them. I'll just read a little bit. And if you hear any noise in the background, it's because I'm recording this at work. And the about page at grouphug.us says, Group Hug was born by magic on October 1st, 2003. Nobody really knows where it came from or how it got here. Jeff Veet handles the soft machinery and James Dogopoulos operates the hard machinery. Group Hug is a machine. It's not very good with email, but you can try it anyway. And so I've done some searches, because a lot of them are very short sentences. Um, You know, stuff like, I don't like you, or I don't like myself, basically. Anyway, so I decided to go through and sort out some of the good ones. And here's what I found. So let's begin at grouphug.us. And the first anonymous confession goes like this. Shut up, all of you. You're such... Ark, I don't care. You're all retards. Look, so you're having a hard time. Okay, I'm sorry, but fucking shut up about it because I could give less than a rat's ass about it. Once in a while is all right, but you're like a fucking train wreck. Just shut up. Seriously. What? Do you think I'll feel sorry for you? I don't because I'm a frigging bastard and I find most of you quite particularly annoying or two-faced or maybe both. Ugh, shut up, shut up, shut up. You're right, you're not special. You're just as unique as the rest of us. Maybe that's saying something? Maybe it's not. Shut your fucking face. The only reason I'm talking to you right now is so you'll fucking stop calling me all whiny and depressed. Want to know why I broke up with you, for real? Because when I'm around, you feel so fucking fake. Is this a revelation? Are you hurt yet? Because I'm just getting started. The stuff you write sucks, by the way, a lot. A fucking lot. Ever heard of quality over quantity? And you. Yeah, you. Put on a fake smile, my ass. I'll tell you to go fucking kill yourself. But then that means that they're going to call me up. My best friend just killed himself. Wah, wah, wah. Well, fucking guess what? Your best friend is stupid and retarded. All depressed because no one will give him pussy? Well, I don't blame them. He's fucking stupid. A fucking attention whore. When people are in a group and no one is talking about him or to him, he gets all bitchy. Yeah, you heard me. You guys are so full of shit. You're mentally constipated. You suck a guitar. You suck. (laughs) You suck a guitar. Your songs suck. Stick to playing your brass crash. You look like a Neanderthal the way your brow line sticks out so far. You sound like a retard when you try to do your death growl. Fucking shut up. God damn. I wish I was a fat nerd who played video games instead of a hot one just so I could be a recluse and be totally ignored. Ah, sweet, sweet first-person shooters. As I snipe those goddamn bastards in the face, I'll pretend it's you. Or maybe clip open their oxygen tanks so they die a slow death of suffocation. Yes. Fuck, I hate you. Shut up. Do the world a favor. Now, obviously, this would have been difficult for the person to say to another person because people don't like hearing those kind of things. So, this anonymous confession hopefully got out what this guy had to say to his friends. So, so very sad. All right, and the next anonymous confession goes like this. I have been sleeping with one of my best friends, and he's got a girlfriend. I've only been with one other guy before that, and he treated me like shit. I've liked my best friend now for a very, very long time, and he, me. He's not the type to cheat on his girl, and I feel like a terrible bitch for being the scarlet woman. The sex is great, but I'm afraid that may be all that'll come of our relationship because he's still with his other girl, and I can't help but be jealous and sometimes feel like he doesn't think I compare or that I'm not girlfriend material or that all I'm good for is sex. It's silly to think that of your best friend, but I honestly don't know what to believe anymore. Karma's been biting me hard on the ass already. But I like him so much sometimes I feel as if it's love? I definitely don't want to say that because that'll definitely turn him away from me. I'm a stupid little whore and I feel like I deserve whatever hardships come my way because I'm being a deceitful little bitch. He acts like he cares so much about me. But when I hear him on the phone and he mumbles, love you to her, I can't help but feel like shit. And the next confession goes, 
I wish this past two weeks had never happened. Then I'd still be happy. Fucking hell. Did he have to be such a fucking jackass? Not only does he dump me before even making the effort to see me, but within a week and a bit he saw a new girl and is practically thrusting her in my face. I did my very best. I listened to all his crap. Even when he was being a complete ass, I stuck with him. I didn't cheat. I did nothing to hurt him. But because I'm too proud to show him how I'm feeling, he decides to show off some new girl. He doesn't know what he's doing to me because I'm not going to tell him. Even my friends and family think I'm happy and strong. But all I can think about is him and how he's probably feeding this other girl the same bullshit he fed me. How am I ever supposed to trust another human being again? And I've put on at least two pounds in the last couple of days. I need to puke. I have an overwhelming urge to drag something sharp across my wrist and just end this all. Not just because of him. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm just another pathetic little teenage fuck up. Why bother? No one will miss me. I don't even know why I'm writing this on some American website. Maybe because of the fact that I'm English, and the chance of anyone reading this is small, considering only one of my friends knows about this site and knows that I know about it too. I'm so angry. All the fucking time, I just want him to pay for what he's done. I'm slowly going insane. He's even made me doubt God. What the fuck? Why bother? To the rest of you on this site, thank you for your amazing confessions. Some of them are just plain hilarious, but others are really sad. Gah, I don't half know how to chat some shit. Don't know what that last part meant, but sad times for the, the ladies on the group hug us. And in our next confession, a vixen flips the script on men. And it goes like this. I lie all the time because I can. I make guys want me. They tell me they want a relationship, and I say I want one too. Then I go and find some guy I don't know and give him a blowjob. On top of that, I swallow. Then I go back to the guy who thinks I'm going out with him, and I stick my tongue in his mouth. I think I've done this three times. I also sleep with married men, and they love it. I don't feel guilty about it at all. They tell me so much about their lives, it makes me want to puke. I could ruin them. I really get a laugh when I see them with their wives. I also have been lying about my age since I was 14. I would sleep with guys who were 25. I'm still lying about it at the age of 17. I say I'm 19. Most of the guys I'm sleeping with are over 23 up to the age of 33. I once got oral sex from a 50-year-old man. He gave really good head. I keep all of this from my friends. If they knew, they wouldn't hang around with me. I get a big kick out of my dirty secret life. Well, I hope all of you with daughters are thinking about that. <laughs> and the next one is from a lonely man. And it goes like this. I'm a 20-year-old virgin guy and have, so far, never been in a relationship. Yeah, I've been in love, madly in love, but I've never taken the next step found out whether it was reciprocated or not, and made a fulfilling relationship out of it. When I was young, I fell in love deeply with any girl I so much as fancied and always got my heart broken. I fear I'm scarred by this and can't love as deeply as I should be able to. I am also goddamn jealous of anyone in a relationship that it makes me sick to my stomach. For my darker hours, I feed myself bullcrap about myself not being ready yet in other mantras. But every time, I can't help but ask myself, if I'm not ready now, will I ever be? I mean, it's entirely possible that I can go through this life, or at least my most enjoyable years, without companionship. Jesus, what's wrong with me? I mean, I think I'm... What's up? Okay. See? I told you. I told you I was at work. Anyway. Jesus, what's wrong with me? I mean, I think I'm normal, and then I try to deal with girls in this weird maladjusted introverted thing surfaces, and, and I just end up consigned with being the asexual quote-unquote friend, which basically doesn't mean a goddamn thing. When my friends talk about love or sex or even just girls in general, I can't help but feel like I should shut up, that I'm not qualified to talk, and that they know that I'm hopelessly behind them in human relationships. It's like that with friendships, too. It's like I can't commit. Not that I'm afraid to commit, just that I wouldn't know how. I don't know how to make that leap from casual friend to good friend. I can meet new people and talk about the weather and what classes you're taking and all that horse shit. But I just can't make that great connection most of the time. When I do, it's just an accident. I have quote-unquote best friends, but I don't think I'm anyone's best friend. There's always someone else that's cooler. What's up? This is never going to get finished. Um... I have best friends, but I don't think I'm anyone's best friend. There's always someone else that's cooler or more interesting or richer or better looking, etc. I get so mad I want to puke when my friends share those common stories and anecdotes that always make them really good friends. I can't help that I wasn't there. Why do I have to suffer like that? What I really hate is when I meet a new girl when I'm with another guy and the guy is much more charming. It makes my blood boil. I'm such a jealous fuck. I'm jealous of any quality, any... <laughs> 
I'm jealous of any quality anyone can possibly have. Even if I didn't like the girl or think she's attractive, if they laugh out of pleasure, it's like they're laughing at me for being such an inept little shit. It makes me feel so inadequate socially. I just can't charm. It's like lying, which I also can't do. Yeah, whatever. It might be okay, but all I get is misery from it. I must be so messed up. Other people's pleasure makes me angry and jealous. And parties aren't any better. I feel like I'm shopping for a whore. (laughs) Okay. And parties aren't any better. I feel like I'm shopping for a whore, where others see themselves as finding someone to dance with. I swear, if I had a girl, I would love parties. I'd have nothing to prove. But since I can't have any fun at a party without a girl, how am I going to get a girl at a party? I swear, my best friend is probably going to get married to this fucking supermodel girlfriend while I've never had a kiss that meant a damn. Well, therapy is in order for this person, I think. Oh, well, this is a good one. All right. And so I just did a search for the word vagina, and the first three posts that came up are these confessions, and they go as follows. By age 15, I could... <laughs> By age 15, I could put my entire fist in my own vagina. I am now 19 and can fist both my vagina and ass, and this is now the only way I can orgasm. I think it's probably a problem, but I don't care because I love how it feels. I think this makes me a slut. Oh, that's a terrible ending of that. Found happiness and with her double fisting, and she can't can't deal with it. I guess that's why she had to confess anonymously. Because who in their right mind would be able to listen to that confession in person and uh, <laughs> not laugh? Anyway... The next vagina-related confession goes like this. I hooked up with a prostitute last night. She didn't expect me to eat her out, but when I started kissing her vagina, she said, quote-unquote, she had to douche first. I told her, don't worry about it, and ate out and cleaned an already wet, sticky vagina with my tongue. That confession is gross. (laughs) Grosser than the fisting one, for some reason. And the next vagina-related confession goes as follows. My boyfriend has anger management problems, and even though I act as though I'm worried, I actually think it's the sexiest thing ever when he gets really intense and crazy. It comes out in the bedroom sometimes, and I come the hardest when he gets rough and freaky. One time when he was really into it, he actually pulled out, screamed, what? Right at my vagina, spit on it, slapped it twice, then continued to fuck me even harder than before. It was the hottest thing that has ever happened to me. I guess that girl's vagina asked him a question he did not appreciate. And we'll do a few more vagina-related ones, because it's hilarious. And the next vagina-related one, well, it's not really vagina-related, but it's just a, a confession that has the word vagina in it somewhere. goes like this. I fantasize about anywhere from four to eight black guys just ravaging me. I'd like for them to have huge dicks and get really nasty with it. Make them give me all, make me, what? Oh, hello. <laughs> Oh, that was a potentially embarrassing one. Anyway, I fantasize about anywhere from four to eight black guys just ravaging me. I'd like for them to have huge dicks and get really nasty with it. Make me give them all rim jobs and teabag the shit out of me. I'm a married white lady with great kids and a great husband. He goes to work every day with no complaints. I guess I'm like one of those desperate housewife bitches, only not as bitchy. Sometimes I think about getting a webcam and going into chat rooms and doing horrible, dirty things on cam, even though I'm not that fine. I guess I figure as long as you have a vagina, there's some guy out there who's going to oblige you. I used to be a real whore and I long for those days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I used to be a real whore and I long for those days to be back again. What's up? Uh, can I get that extension cord? I can't get this horrible woman's story out of my mouth. People keep interrupting. It's horrible though. I used to be a real whore and I long for those days to be back again. Everyday living is so mundane to me. I think about packing up all my shit and leaving it behind someday, but I'm afraid that it's too late. And that if I do, I'm going to fuck it up and have to turn around and come back. And that if I do come back, there'll be nothing to come back to because everyone's going to be so fed up with my shit. I pretend to like things that others do just to get along. When in reality, all I want to do is sit back, get stoned, and listen to some heavy metal music. I want to dye my hair black and get piercings all over my body and just to be a fucking freak. But nice moms don't do that. I want to let my house go to shit and get dirty and say screw it, but nice moms don't do that either. I'm so fucking repressed, it's unbelievable. Sometimes I think I'm going to live to see the end of the world and I get really excited about it because I'm ready for the life... (laughs) 
because I'm ready for the life I fucked up to be over. But then I think, damn, I wonder if I'm going to go to heaven or hell. And then I get all paranoid about it and shit. And I start praying to God to forgive me for having all these unforgivable thoughts. I think I need some professional help. But I don't want it because I don't want anyone to tell me to my face that I am the nutcase that I am. That would be admitting defeat. And that's just fucked up. Anyway, thanks for reading this, people. That... Uh, that's my favorite so far. That is pretty crazy. And the next anonymous confession goes like this. I have a penis, but I want a vagina do badly. I cannot stand it. I don't have enough money to undergo surgery, so I think I'm going to do it myself. I don't know how to, but I have looked on Google to see how to perform the surgery. I think I might do it this time, guys. That's the American spirit. To go out and do it yourself. See, we don't need this nanny state. People can perform surgery on themselves. Now, and here's one that I don't think is real. But I will read it anyway. And it goes like this. I was molested when I was very young and have masturbated ever since. Now my vagina doesn't look like anyone else's. And being with men makes me very nervous. What if they laugh at me and call me beef drapes? See, that is unlikely. (laughs) Those two things don't go together. But maybe they do. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't mean to denigrate your uh, confession. And the last confession I'll read about vaginas is probably true. And it goes like this. And this one time I had a raging yeast infection and didn't tell this guy. And then we had sex and he told me my vagina tasted weird. So I told him it was just his mouth. Am I a bad person? Hmm. Well, I don't know. Different people have different morality about letting a guy eat a yeasty vagina. And the next series of confessions are all ones that I found searching for the word heroin, which there are a lot of confessions about heroin. And it goes like this. I'm 17. My girlfriend is 15. Two weeks ago, I learned that when she was 13, not only had she had sex, but got pregnant and had an abortion with someone I know who was 15 at the time. One of those people you loosely regard as a quote-unquote friend, but really don't hang around with. It's a closely guarded secret, and very few people know this. I feel somewhat disgusted, and I do not feel so sexually attracted to my girlfriend any longer. I can't get this fucking notion out of my head that she was sincerely intimate with him and that it went this far. I sort of feel betrayed to, in some bizarre sense, because we'd already had sex before she told me. It's a guy she went out with from before this event up until around last summer. I also learned she did heroin in that same summer when she was 13 and LSD last summer. I love this girl. She's incredible, compassionate, funny, intelligent, but I'm scared. I'm scared she's not quite the person I thought she was, that I think she is. I'm scared she hasn't changed. I'm scared I'll be let down. I don't want to be let down. I'm pessimistic. I have this traditional idea of how teenage love is ultimately pointless. Okay. But I've never felt this kind of love for another human being before. And I'm scared it will all fall apart. Touching. And the next heroin-related confession goes like this. I really hope that this stage in my life is a bit of a run-up to when I go away to university slash traveling and experiment with sex and drugs because everything else seems completely mundane. If I never manage to do any more drugs than I already have, my life will be, to me, a failure. I know that if most of my friends knew this was me, they'd be completely shocked, as they know I'm a bit of a dopehead, but they're all really middle class and disgusted by heroin and coke when I'd do anything to get some. Simple and to the point. And the next one goes like this. I have a crush on my roommate's boyfriend, who pretty much lives with us. He's so gorgeous. He's smart, a lot smarter than me, I'll admit. Quite a philosophical intellectual and very well-read. Him and his girlfriend live downstairs in the living room, and they just do heroin all the time. He's definitely flirted with me, but up to a certain point. I never flirt back because I don't want to start a bunch of drama. And he tells all the other roommates he's pretty much just using her for a place to crash, and he can't believe how dumb she is. I like her, so I'm not going to start shit but I'd be so much better for him. God, I want to jump his bones. The heroin thing is not an issue, apparently. And continuing with heroin-related confessions, we go with this one. I put myself at risk for HIV and hepatitis by sharing my friend's needle the first time I shot heroin. I was tripping my ass off on the best acid I'd ever had. I woke up with three track marks where he missed twice and hit the third. I am absolutely repulsed when I think about that night and feel incredibly dirty but it was absolutely the best feeling in the world. I daydream about feeling it shoot through my veins and engulf my body. WTF is wrong with me. No, well, that would probably be the heroin. And there's a reason why you shouldn't do it. And that's why. And finally, we'll end the heroin-related confessions with this. I'm such a slag. I'm still a virgin, but I just let people use me all the time. I have no morals. When I'm older, I want to be a prostitute and addicted to heroin. Actually sounds like an okay lifestyle. Who do they hurt? They just die young. 
sounds good. Eee. All right, so the next five confessions are about abortion, and they go like this. I was forced to go through with an abortion. The girl I was with at the time lied to me and told me it was hers so that I would pay for the procedure. What? This doesn't make any sense. So that I would pay for the procedure. She also lied to me about why she wanted the procedure and then lied to me again to keep me with her through the whole ordeal. I held her hand through the abortion and I witnessed in horror the results. I have nightmares about it to this day. She dumped me on the way home from the hospital and then told me that the baby wasn't mine. I want to forgive her, but I can't. And who can blame you? And the next one goes like this. I hate people who are against abortion. And I think a lot of the people who are against it are prudes anyway. Wait until you have sex and you're late and think you're pregnant and then tell me how you fucking feel about it. I never had an abortion. I'm on birth control. Freedom of fucking choice. Right on, sister. And the next one goes like this. I wish that abortion clinics were on every corner, like next to the 7-Eleven or something, in 24 hours. That'd be rad. Conservatives against abortion should be aborted in their 100th trimester or whatever the fuck. Fuck you. And the next one goes like this. My childhood was rough. I lost my virginity when I was 14. I was drunk, high on at least four different drugs, miles and miles away from home, and barely conscious when it happened. The girl who had her way with me was 17, had just had an abortion, was dating a meth dealer who liked me and taught me the trade, and it started because my back got itchy from all the pills. I asked her to scratch my back, she asked me to scratch hers, and I just started giving her a massage. It really turned her on, and she let me know this by putting on some porn, cuddling up next to me and rubbing my leg slowly climbing up to my crotch, and she started to jerk me off. She could tell I was into it, so she took off my pants, blew me for a bit, and then we had sex on her couch, watching porn on drugs and alcohol. I was 14, and I can't believe I was such a fucked up kid. I suppose I still am, just for letting my shit slip that bad. I don't know, dude. You sound awesome to me! <laughs> and the next abortion-related one goes like this. I mind-fucked an emotionally unstable woman who I had gotten pregnant to have an abortion. She had one about five years ago and cries about it to this day. But knowing this, I used subtle emotional blackmail to get her to have another one. I support the option, but I still feel like shit about it. The protesters outside spat her. Sp oh, fuck. The protesters outside spat on her on the way in. Ouch. And the final abortion confession goes like this. We were drunk. I took you outside to a bar into the parking lot in the freezing cold. We went to that dark corner behind the white truck, remember? We had met a few hours before. I let you grope me, finger me against that brick wall. It's the only wild thing I've ever done. You didn't call me again after that, and I was fine with that. Now my period is late, and I can't remember for the life of me if we had sex. Yesterday I told my friend I could never have an abortion. Now I know that I would in a heartbeat. Whoa. Think about that. Like the beating heart of the baby, which is created the moment the life is created. Think about it. People, the board. Well, okay. No. I'm not getting into that. <clears throat> now what? What should I read about next? And next we'll read confessions that include the word poser. And the first of the poser confessions goes like this. You really need to stop buying things just because they are in hot topic. I swear, you must go in there and decide you will start liking something because they have merchandise available. It must be great to not have to think about things or trying something new on your own. It's so sad that the mall does your thinking for you. It's people like you that ruin it for everyone else who actually liked things in the first place. Great job, asshole. Seriously, what kind of a douche has never heard about Boondock Saints until a few months ago when Hot Topic started carrying t-shirts? You are an idiot poser who likes to take pictures of yourself flipping off the camera. You're not hardcore. You are a dumbass who needs to be shot in the face. Totally agree. And the next confession is like this. My husband never trusts me and constantly accuses me of cheating on him, even though he almost left me to go fuck some emo poser who was a foot taller than me. I have over and over proven my faithfulness and have lost friends in the process. I feel a piece of me die inside when I comfort his paranoias. I want to fuck someone else. I want to leave and be happy. I just can't find the strength to actually leave him. And the next one goes like this. D.H. I listen to music I think you would approve of. I watch movies that I think you would like. I'm trying to become a person you might want to spend time with. I'm trying to become interesting to you. I am no longer sure of my own tastes. I try to fit myself into someone else's mold, and I don't know who I am. I like the music I listen to, the movies I watch, so is that really me? A person can't kid themselves about what they like so that even they are fooled, right? I have always taken on the colors of the men I have fallen in love with. I am a chameleon. I just want you to like me. 
I want to have things to talk about, and it's not that I'm a poser, but I will search for some common ground that we can share. I have always done this. Perhaps I don't think that I'm good enough on my own, that I must come with extras and special features to be good enough for anyone to remember. I have always taken on the colors of the men I fall in love with, but you are the only man whose colors felt real, felt comfortable, and familiar. Felt like my own skin. You remind me of me. I think that is why I love you. Perhaps, even if I never do get to speak to you, I will learn something about myself. I have probably picked the most painful way to do so, but it is the only way I have found in a long time. You make me feel more like myself, and less like a chameleon. Less like a person who is lying to herself. Thank you for that. I guess. And the next poser-related confession goes like this. When I was 13 or 14, I found a mixtape of 77 Punk and got really into that kind of music. People called me a huge poser and stopped talking to me. When I was 15, I introduced my boyfriend to it. He started dressing like a punk, even though his favorite band was still Dave Matthews Band. Everyone thought he was really punk and really cool. No one thought he was a poser. I dumped him. To this day, he listens to soft rock, but wears a leather jacket and tight jeans, and people think he is a punk. I am 19 now, and people still call me a poser, even though I wear very nondescript tight black jeans and black t-shirts every day. I really hate everyone. I need to move out of this town. And finally, we'll end this podcast with a bunch of confessions that came up when I searched for the word queer. And the first queer-related confession goes like this. A couple of years ago, I moved cities. I told everyone in the new city that I was either transgender or that I was bisexual or a lesbian. In reality... I'm a chick who is pretty much straight with the occasional transgression. I guess I just like to represent the queer side of life because this per- because that particular city is so damn conservative. I kind of wish I could be transgendered or something because at least that would be a little bit more interesting. I'm sure. And the next one goes like this. I'm sick and tired of everyone acting like being a homo is okay. It's fucked, always been wrong, and always will be wrong. It has nothing to do with religion, it's just biology. Being a queer just doesn't cut it for keeping our species going. It's kind of like eating with your feet and walking on your hands. Because you can do those things doesn't mean you should. As for all you faggots and dykes out there, take your cockeyed perverted selves and go fuck off. No normal people want to hear about it or see it. The only reason people act like it's okay is so that no one calls them a homophobe. That's totally true. I feel like I can't even yell at gay people in the street without someone saying that I'm a homophobe, which is totally not true. And the next queer-related confession goes like this. I am 15 years old, and I know in my heart that I want to be a girl. I cry myself to sleep almost every night because I am not. I have a secret stash of clothes, some stolen from thrift store donation bins. I feel very bad about doing that, but I'm too ashamed to buy girls' clothes. And some taken from my older sister. She was going to throw them out anyways. And every time I'm home alone, I dress up. I love to feel pretty, and I look so much better as a girl than I do as a boy. And I wear my hair in a very unisex cut, but I wish I could grow it long and wear it more feminine. I started dressing when I was eight years old. I would play house with my best friend, and I would always play the mommy dressed in some of my sister's clothes. He would kiss me and touch me and tell me I looked pretty, and I felt so special and loved. When we were 10, we still played house, but we were more secret about it because my mom didn't think it was right for boys that old to still be playing dress up. We did more stuff in secret, and I would give him oral sex and hand jobs, but he would not do anything to me in return. I didn't mind. I think I fell in love with him and would do anything for him. Things changed when we were 12, and some other boys at school started teasing him for hanging around with the sissy. He stopped playing with me and would insult me and call me queer and fag boy and names like that in front of other people. I haven't had a friend for three years now, and I'm so lonely. If I had been born a girl, everything would be so right now. I wish people wouldn't be so mean and try to understand what this kind of pain is like. And the next one that has the word queer in it goes like this. I once smoked weed at my mate's party and had a great time. I later told my girlfriend and found out that she didn't like it and was really upset at me. A second party came around and she heard there was going to be drugs there and asked if I was going. I said no, but really I was planning to. She later found out that I lied to her and got so pissed. I swore too to her that I would never smoke pot again and that I would be honest from now on. Me and my mates got high one more time and I haven't told my GF about it since. She found out that there was pot there, and I know she's going to ask me if I smoked some. I really, really don't want to lie to her again, but I know she's going to get really pissed and perhaps even break up with me if I told her I smoked. I could lie and get away with it. She would never know. But if she did find out, I'm fucked. I really love her. We've been together for three years, and I can't even be honest with her. And the final queer confession goes like this. I loved you. I still love you. 
When I look into your eyes, I sense an unexplainable connection. I know that it's mutual. Yes, being queer will make your life complicated, especially here in the South. I just want you to be happy. And when I see you with her, I can read into you and see you are not happy. It is a shame, because if only I could muster the courage to say all of this to your face, I have a feeling that all of my dreams would come true. Knowing this scares the hell out of me. You go first. I can't and don't want to be with anyone else but you. Whoa, heavy, heavy duty confessions. Well, that's going to have to do it for this episode of Lou Reads the Internet for You. I hope you enjoyed hearing the anonymous confessions left at grouphug.us. Well, wasn't that an exciting group of confessions? Surely there's a ton more confessions on that site because people are needlessly confessing. Well, I suppose it serves a purpose, but confessing every day. And the best part is anonymously. Now, of course, like I said before, there are some hilarious uh, fake confessions and possibly I read more than one today but um, I prefer to believe they're all true or that most of them are true oh I wanted to thank whoever it was the uh, I believe Dave something David something who wrote an excellent and very thoughtful review of Lou Reed's on the iTunes store I appreciate it a lot it's great still stuck at 29 reviews uh, or star votes or whatever they want to call that I appreciate everyone who takes the time to do that it's uh, very thoughtful and kind of you to do so. And I don't know if everyone goes to the Facebook group. I don't believe everyone does. But if you do, or want to check it out anyway, there was a, uh, a in the middle of last month, I had a, a video that I made end up on G-Force um, Attack of the Show. So that was kind of a nice surprise. So you can check out that link is available on the Facebook page. I think I forgot to mention that last time. And I don't know if any of you guys are going to the rally to restore sanity or keep fear alive at the end of October, but I will be there. I will not be doing anything podcast related. I will just be uh, standing, most likely, and clapping occasionally uh, with perhaps a cheer of some variety if I hear something that uh, strikes my fancy. And I don't know if anyone saw me at Comic-Con, but I was there, Comic-Con NY. I was there with my son, and I wasn't, again, not doing anything podcast related. I was just walking around, uh, and I was dressed as a normal person. So it might have been hard to spot me. But I was there. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of Lou Reads the Internet for You. And I want to thank everyone for listening to this reading of grouphug.us, the anonymous confessions website. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll tune back in. And I hope that you'll tell everyone you know that they should also listen to it and download copies to their MP3 playlists and rename my podcast as like their favorite Justin Bieber song or, you know, just, you know, this is important. Trick your friends into listening to Lou Reed's at every chance you get. It's very important. All right, that's going to do it for me. My name's Lou. This has been Lou Reed's The Internet for you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>